Welcome to Health Talking You, a program that fills you in on the latest health science news from each of the six schools and colleges in the Academic Health Center at the University of Minnesota. I'm your host, Nick Hansen. Today we're talking about two of the top defenses for cancer, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. As the second leading cause of death among Americans, cancer has impacted nearly everyone in some shape or form. The topic of cancer, however, is still somewhat taboo. It often makes for a sensitive topic of conversation. And on top of that, unless someone has personally experienced cancer treatment, it's easy to confuse what the best defenses are for fighting it, especially when it comes to chemotherapy and radiation. My colleague, Laura Walenta, had the opportunity to sit down and talk with University of Minnesota physician Edward Greeno. He's also the medical director of the Masonic Cancer Center at the U of M. Welcome to the program, Laura. Thanks, Nick. I know it sounds pretty basic, but can you tell us the differences between chemotherapy and radiation treatments? Sure, no problem. In fact, most people confuse the two forms of therapy, or they group them together when really they're completely different. Radiation therapy consists of energy particles, so things like photons or carbon ions that are delivered to the tumor in attempt to damage the cancerous cells. Uh, Radiation therapy can be administered either externally through machines or internally through radioactive needles or injections. Chemotherapy, on the other hand, consists of using chemicals or drugs to treat the cancer. These drugs can be delivered regionally or directly. Traditionally, they are administered through the bloodstream, but they can be delivered to a specific region as well, such as the liver. Both therapies, chemo and radiation, aim to damage cancer cells while minimizing the damage around the tumor to normal, healthy cells. All right, thanks for clearing that up. It really helps. Now tell me, is there one that's more harmful or toxic than the other? That's a good question, Nick. There can be a wide range of toxic effects from both chemo and radiation. Also, it's important to note the degree to which a person becomes ill is usually dependent on the dosage and how well the individual handles the treatment. Here's what Dr. Greeno had to say about the side effects of each therapy. So with most forms of radiation, the biggest side effects are just local tissue injury around the tumor, and essentially the tissues are getting burned. It's probably what is the best explanation at a simple level of that. Uh, The side effects of chemotherapies are very diverse and depend on the exact nature of what's going on. Most often, chemotherapies are toxic to other rapidly developed dividing cells. So there'd be things like your bone marrow. That's why people get low blood counts with chemotherapy. The lining of the GI tract is another common target because your GI tract is always turning over. It's lining every day. Um, But it really depends on the particular type of chemotherapy. So it sounds like there's a big difference when it comes to side effects. But how do doctors know which treatment to prescribe to a patient? Some forms of cancer are better suited to a specific treatment. Radiation is better if cancer is localized in a particular part of the body because then less tissue will be damaged. Chemotherapy, on the other hand, makes the most sense for cancer that is widespread. However, certain types of cancer respond better to specific treatments such as testicular cancer, which is very sensitive to chemotherapy. And some forms of cancer are sensitive to both types of therapy. So do doctors ever recommend using both radiation and chemotherapy at the same time? Yes, in many cases, both forms of therapy are used and often at the same time. Dr. Greeno explained how it works. In many cancers, we're using both chemo and radiation, often at the same time. And part of that's because the injury that the chemo produces and the injury that the radiation produces can be synergistic. And so you can take advantage of causing a little bit of system-wide injury from a chemotherapy that might not cause too much damage to the tumor, and a little bit of injury to the tumor from radiation, put those two together and you suddenly got enough injury to the tumor to kill the tumor without exposing the rest of the body to as much toxicity. So when you think about treatment, are chemotherapy and radiation the two top defenses that we have against cancer? Well, when it's possible, surgery to remove the tumor is the best option. But chemotherapy and radiation are the other two top defenses against cancer. So besides surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, are there any other ways to fight cancer? Yes, Dr. Greeno mentioned one more way that's showing potential. Probably the, the third modality that we, for most cancers, don't have very effective methods yet would be taking advantage of the immune system and trying to use the immune system as a way to get rid of the cancer. Interesting. So it sounds like the next research phase of cancer is trying to manipulate the immune system. 
Yes, in fact, Dr. Greeno is conducting a study that includes salmonella injections to take advantage of the immune system and weaken the tumor with hopes of eventually shrinking the size to operate or destroy it altogether. Other colleagues in the Masonic Cancer Center are using viruses to manipulate the immune system, too. Thanks for that interesting report, Laura. Look forward to hearing more about future findings. That's it for today's show. We'd like to thank our guests, Laura Walenta and Dr. Edward Greeno, for sharing their time and expertise. For more information about health sciences from the University of Minnesota, visit www.ahc.umn.edu. You can also find us on iTunes U. Just go to the University of Minnesota homepage and click on Medicine and Health. I'm your host, Nick Hansen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.